refuge You are my sanctuary When I feel afraid You're my hiding place You are my refuge Here when the storm is raging Underneath your wings I rejoice and sing Cause you are my refuge You are my refuge You are my sanctuary When I feel afraid You're my hiding place You are my refuge Here when the storm is raging Underneath your wings I rejoice and sing That you are my Sing that one more time unto Him Oh, you are my refuge You are my sanctuary When I feel afraid You're my high place you are my refuge here when the storm is raging underneath your wings I rejoice and sing that you are my refuge mercy rewrote my life mercy rewrote my life mercy oh mercy to him once again now oh mercy re-roll. thank God for his mercy and grace this afternoon oh mercy Give him a clap of praise. If it wasn't for his mercy and grace and goodness towards us, where would we be in this hour? Amen. We got so much to thank him for this afternoon. Amen. You may be seated this afternoon. If anybody has a burning special in their heart that you want to sing, you just do like this to me, and I'll be more than glad to have you come up. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's sing this song, Keep on the Firing Line, Key of G. If you're in the battle for the Lord and right, keep on the fiery line. If you will, my brother, surely you must fight. Oh, keep on the fiery line. There are many dangers that we all must face. 
days. If we die of fighting, it is no disgrace. A coward in the service, you will find no place. So keep on the firing line. Well, you must fight, be brave against all evil. Never run, nor even lag behind. If you soldier he can trust keep on the firing line if you wear a crown and bear the cross you must so keep on the firing line life is but to labor for the master dear help to banish evil and to spread good cheer Cowardly rewarded for your service here, so keep on the firing line. Oh, you must fight, be brave against all evil. Never run, nor even lag behind. If you would win for God and the righteous, keep on the firing line. When we get to heaven, brother, we'll be glad. Keep on the firing line. I will praise the Savior for the call we had. Oh, keep on the firing line. When we see the souls that we have helped to to Jesus from the paths of sin. With a shout of welcome, we will all march in. So keep on the firing line. Well, you must fight, be brave against all evil. Never run, nor even lag behind. If you fight be brave against all evil never never run nor even lag behind if you would wait for the firing line give the lord a clap of praise this afternoon amen praise the lord jesus Let's take up our offering then. Uh, I guess, Brother Michael, you want to help us take up our offering? Amen. Lord, thank you for the gathering here today, Lord. Just thank you for the victory we've seen today, Lord. Let us continue to see victory in the service, Lord. And bless Brother George as he comes to minister to us, Lord. Answer all our needs and be with us and guide us. In the person of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Sister Esther, I don't want to put you on the spot, but okay. Brother Hantis, they, do you want to sing something? <laughs> All right. Sister Esther was the one who called you out, so. <laughs> she said, play it in G. <laughs> Excuse me. That's a private joke. going to make a spectacle yourself. You need to put your spectacles on. <laughs> One sixteen. Play folk. E flat. <laughs> Excuse me. 
Excuse me. We're floating down the stream of time. We have not long to stay. The stormy cloud of darkness will turn to brightest day. We said, take courage, for we're not left alone. The life boat soon is coming to gather the jewels home. Then cheer, my brother, cheer. Our trials will soon all be o'er. Once we shall meet, shall meet upon the golden shore. We're pilgrims and we're strangers here. We're seeking a city to come. The life boat soon is coming to gather his jewels home sometimes the devil tempts me and says it's all in vain to try to live a christian life and walk in jesus name but then I hear the master say, I'll do a helping hand. And if you'll only trust me, I'll guide you to that land. Then cheer, my brother, cheer. Our trials will soon be o'er. Our loves we shall meet, shall meet upon thy old shore. We're pilgrims and we're strangers here. We're seeking a city to come. The lifeboat soon be his jewel home. The lifeboat soon is coming. My eyes of faith I see as she sweeps through the waters to rescue you and me and land us safely in the port with friends we love so dear. But ready, cried the captain, oh look, She's almost here. Then cheer, my brother, cheer. Our trials will soon all be o'er. Our loved ones we shall meet, shall meet upon the golden shore. Then Grim's hand, we're strangers here. We're seeking a city to come. The lifeboat soon is coming to carry his jewel soul. Oh, now's the time to get on board while she is passing by. But if you stand and wait too long, he shall forever die. The fair is paid for. And all the captain bids you come and get on board the lifeboat. She'll carry you safely home. They cheer, my brother, cheer. Our trials will soon all be yours. Our loved ones we shall meet, shall meet upon. And we're strangers 
Is here we're singing a city to come. The lifeboat suit is coming to carry it yours home. I hope you're ready. You won't need a life preserver. Thank you very much. God bless you. Here, you can take this back with you. <laughs> Amen. Believe it or not, I was, was, I was planning the songs yesterday, and, and I was, that was actually one of the songs I was thinking about singing. And I said, well, let's just sing these other ones. And Brother Hanta sings it. So get the best of both worlds today. Amen. The uh, Lord is good. Amen. Yeah, it's just in a better voice. <laughs> Amen. Let's stand to our feet. Um, we're going to have Brother Wade come. Uh, let's sing Greater Than All My Sin as he, as he comes. Greater than all my sin is the blood that still cleanses me. It's the grace that still sets me free to praise Him. I know the blood's applied. I'm walking in newness of life. I cannot fall for His greater. The blood of the Lamb. Oh, thank God for the blood. Oh, greater than all my sin is the blood that still cleanses me. It's the grace that still sets me free to praise Him. Still sets me free to praise Him. I know the blood of blood. I'm walking in newness of life. I cannot fall for its greater. the bleeding word so today we're going to hear the word of God we're going to hear the bleeding word of God spoken through a vessel of flesh as brother George said unworthy as as brother let's give this brother a good hand good job good job always known he had a gift in his life his mother's just a sweetheart for raising him and and we sure appreciate him. So appreciate his stand. A uh, 22-year-old man with a stand like that. Ain't happening to much. There ain't many. 99% is doing their own thing. I'm glad you're doing your own thing. Right here. And we sure do appreciate that. But, uh, yeah, we're filthy rags. I mean, we're not. We're worthless. But God said. God said. What, did Brother Luis? Where's that? But God. Remember he preached. But God who is rich in mercy. He's the one that makes us worthy. I'm just telling you what he said. He said that about the bride. Robed in righteousness. No wrinkles. Well, that'd be good, wouldn't it? Without spot or wrinkle. This new body, that body ain't going to have no wrinkles on it. Your theophany ain't got no wrinkles in it either. Right? Nope. It's still young, 18 years old. Here to worship God. And I, I, I appreciate you bringing yours with you. Amen. And if you're not born again, get born again. Right. Amen. Get God inside your soul. He'll change your life. Right. We know 
Uh, Brother George, been, we were just talking, been many, many places all over the country, and he's seen uh, a lot, and he's, he's, uh, his fruits of his labor, you may never know in this life. The fruits of Brother Dale, Brother Mike, all the different ones have been ministering for years and years. You, you, sometimes you think, well, nobody's listening. Somebody's going to come up to you over there and thank you for preaching a word to them and they either got saved, healed, delivered, growth development. They'll say, hey, brother, brother Mike, man, you did it. You're good. So... What? Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. All right. But um, we're going to bring Brother George out, but just remember, when you don't think there's anything going on, if you're a child of God, something's going on. Amen. Something is going on, whether it, whether you see it, I see it, or nobody sees it, all the time. Remember, he's a moving God. Remember, he's a mo- he, he's not going to go. No, he's moving. So he's moving in in our lives, and I believe he's moving in the sanctuary here in our people. We sure appreciate y'all coming again, and we now we want to call Brother George out. And let him come and minister to us. Um, let's sing Open the Eyes of My Heart since he loves that, and that's what he sings over in his place. We'll just sing it again. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see. Wonderful. We do really want to see him, don't we? Amen. Amen. That'll be a great day when we see him. Praise God. Hallelujah. You know, and, and may I comfort you by saying this today, that I thought about it a lot, and I know it's to be true, that one day you will have a personal interview with Jesus Christ. Amen. Yes, you will. He will take you by the hand. And he will talk to you, not in the seventh dimension. He'll come right down to where you are in your new body, but right down here on earth, because we're an earthly bound people like that. Amen. And one day he'll come and appear, and it'll be the same Jesus. And I'll tell you what, he'll comfort you, and he'll go right through your life and everything. And it's going to be, what a day that'll be. What a day that'll be. And we'll meet Brother Brown on the same where he said, when you come and you want to see me, he says, just see where the angels are singing and go down the little, the little path and you'll find me there. Hallelujah. And I'll tell you what. Amen. I'm looking forward to that day too. Amen. 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 I had a dream one time of, of Brother Branham, and, and I've only had about three, but one of them sticks out a lot. Where, where, where in the first dream he said, I hear you're going to India. And I said, right, so they know what's going on over there. And, 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 and amen. And uh, I said, yes, sir. And I know in America, if you call anybody, sir, that's a 
saying of respect. And, and, and so I said, yes, sir. And he said, do you know I was in India? I said, yes, sir. I'm aware of what went on in India when you were there. He says, and he started to reminisce in his mind. And he says, oh, it was wonderful. And I said, yes, sir, I'm really aware of that. And then he turned and them eagle eyes looked at it and he put out his hand. And this is lovely to me, brother. Amen. It was really lovely to me, brother Mike. He said, God bless your ministry in India. Amen. 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 A prophet of God said that. Hallelujah. And I believe it. And, and I don't even have to worry. Usually in November I go, but now it'll be probably uh, January. As that's what I'm hoping. Amen. Coming. That's what they're expecting. Amen. And uh, praise God. So uh, uh, everything's in his hand, isn't it? And, uh, and we know it's going to be blessed. Amen. It's going to be blessed. Amen. Praise God. Certainly is. So uh, the Lord bless you. If you'll stand and we'll read the scripture together. It's in, in, in Philippines chapter 3. And um, it's just I want to, in one sense, go on from what I said this morning. Uh, but you could really go into that. I've got pages here of it on how you were born and your soul and body and, and, and uh, your spirit and right on through and how God met you and that old nature has to die. Romans chapter 6, 7, it has to die. Amen. And the new nature has to live and you crucify the old man, praise God. And, and you live in, with that new nature in you of God. And that's it as a son of God. Hallelujah. And that, that's, that's where we are. Now, I'll just get to this now in a second. Love the word. Don't you love the word of God today? Don't you love it? Hallelujah. And um, we're just going to turn to Philippines here now, chapter 3. And uh, here we are. Amen. Just when you're old, you just could pull out your tablet. It's over the motel and I could do that. I'd rather. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> That's only ones we like it that way. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Something that you can touch. Amen. Hallelujah. And here we are in chapter 3. I think it's verse 7 we're going to think to. He says, And what things were gained to me, uh, those I counted lost for Christ. Amen. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but lost for the excellency of the knowledge of Jesus Christ my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them as but dung, that I may win Christ, and be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through faith. Amen. True faith. That, that in Christ we are made the very righteousness of God. That's the scripture. Amen. And uh, praise the Lord. Uh, Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. Amen. And he goes on to say, uh, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. Because that's all he asked us to remember. Uh, last weekend, before we came here, uh, we had our, uh, our communion and our foot washing service. And before my wife died, when we were in Scotland, she had her communion service and her foot washing. And the, lady, the sisters took her in. And the one that brought her out, she says, she put her own feet into the, into the water. Amen. Oh, Praise God. So she knew something. Amen. And, and we're glad. And, and my other uh, uh, sister-in-law, when uh, the day before she died, we were able to give her communion. But she couldn't swallow. She couldn't eat. She was on nothing. But I was able to put the, the little bit of wine on her, on her lips like I had, and she put in her little tongue and licked it, you know, and I let her husband, because she couldn't eat, I let her husband just partake for her, to do it for her. She's your wife, amen. So it was wonderful, hallelujah, amen. And not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow, a complete that is, but I follow, because I think a Brother Wade's got you up to the stature of a perfect man. He's got a little bit of ways to go, but it's good stuff ahead, amen. It's good stuff ahead, hallelujah. I'm glad. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, we can see that. And uh, amen, that I may know why I was apprehended of Christ Jesus. Uh, brethren, I count it not myself to have apprehended, uh, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are past and behind, and reaching forth unto the things which are before. Amen. That's, that's the commandment. That's what he's telling you to do. Amen. You can't change the past. Amen. You just can't change the past. But your, your future, you can, you can change it. You can live for God. Amen. And so I press. I press toward the mark. Amen. Not just casually. I press. This is my determination. This is my focus. Amen. Uh, the mark 
for the prize. Praise God, nobody, no matter what you're in, if you're running for a prize, you want to get the prize. But one thing that I, I know, and some of you people would know about, amen, uh, the, the uh, disability, you know, the uh, uh, Olympics for dis disabled people. And the beautiful thing that I like about that is there are really no winners. Everybody's a winner. Amen. Amen. It's not the first one over the line. It's you get, if you get over the line yourself, you're a winner. And, they, you know, and that's fair. Because it's not fair for like uh, somebody playing for the Bulldogs or whatever you call yourselves here. And, and somebody that just goes to high school. You can't compare them. Amen. You can't compare them. You know, one's a professional, the other one's kicking it around for fun. But, but so, so that's the way it is. Amen. And, and thank God that, that that's the way God looks at you and I. Just get over the line. That's all. Just get over the line. That's it. You'll be a winner. Amen. You'll be an overcomer. Amen. And so, hallelujah. That's why we do. We press toward the prize. Amen. Well done. That's all I want. Well done, thy good and faithful servant. That's all I need. I hear that. I'll be a very happy person. Amen. God bless you all. Gracious Heavenly Father. Lord, we just thank you, Father, for the Sunday. And you know we love church because, Lord, you're there where two or three are gathered. Lord, and where there's a hundred and three, it don't matter. You're there. You promised to be, and you are. Lord, we feel your presence already. Lord, this day throughout the day. And, dear God, we thank you for your word. And, Lord, we just want to lift up our precious sister, Lord, that uh, had the, that, that turn, Lord. And, dear God, we do commit her to you today. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord. Father, we know, without being told, we know that Lord Satan opposed that. We know he did not like to hear about your deity, your supreme deity. But Lord, he heard it, and he has to retreat and go back. Amen. And bound and, and fettered. Hallelujah. Uh, Lord, we do it. We bind him in Jesus' name. And we pray for her full deliverance. Whatever it takes, Lord, for our hip operation. Lord, for that, what is causing them strokes or whatever. Lord, please be gracious to her and bless us all, Lord. Some of us are getting up. God bless us all today. Bless us all today, we pray, from the youngest to the oldest. Lord, may be a piece of broken bread, for you are the bread of life. Lord, break it to us today, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And you may be seated. Praise God. Hallelujah. And we will just go on into the word, what I, what I thought. I was listening to Brother Branham. There, uh, earlier, where he was talking about God keeps his appointments. And uh, a couple of weeks ago, I was preaching, uh, God keeps his appointments to you. Amen. Not only to that little woman, but to you. Hallelujah. And he can have an appointment with you. He can have something planned for you. And he wants to meet you. And he wants you to be open, to be there when he keeps the, meets the appointment. Amen. And uh, praise the Lord. Uh, you know, I was really touched uh, because when my printer broke down and I couldn't use my notes on it, so I did something which, believe me, and I know Brother uh, Wade could do it. Amen. I could preach to you without any notes. No problem. Amen. No problem. Praise God. And I, I took that story about how uh, that, that uh, invite went by the Pharisee that he would come and he accepted it and about the flunky and all that there. And then what, what Brother Wade was saying this morning about the kiss. There was no kiss given and, uh, there uh, to Jesus. Uh, and there he sat there just as a, a laughing stock. Amen. That's all they wanted to make him. The chief Pharisee, of course, he was getting all the praise and all that. But oh my goodness, some Somewhere, and I think the whole key to that story is somewhere God had his eye on a little prostitute. Amen. And that was the whole thing. That was the appointment that Jesus really went there for. Amen. And I'll tell you what. She was there and we talked about that little woman and how sick she would have been of that life. Just completely. And Lord God, is this what it's all about? Is this what I've come to? And I'll tell you what, you can make a wrong turn, folks, especially you young people. You can make a wrong turn. And don't, you don't need to. You don't need to make a wrong turn. Just keep on the firing line. Keep serving God in your own life. Amen. And he'll guide you. He'll lead you. And he'll never fail you. That's it. I've been watched since 1965. 1965, you weren't even born when I came to the Lord. And I'll tell you what you say. Has he ever failed you? Not one time. Not one time. he never failed us, Brother Don. And he never will fail us. I don't expect him to fail us. And, and I want to just thank you. Amen. 
But, but, but Brother uh, uh, Wade was saying today about, about an offering to use for, for, for the, the people that we go to. Amen. That I hope to go back to. And if I didn't get back to them, I would make sure. Because you know something? My conscience is clear. My goodness, Brother, brother Dale gave us a lot of, uh, over the years. But you know something? My conscience is clear today. What I did without funds. Amen. They weren't mine. I never spent them on me. Hallelujah. They went to the mission field. They went to where they were given for. And, and, and praise God. God, personally, I don't need it. Yeah. Amen. You know, uh, I was thinking, I was looking in my place for a, a dime. And uh, I couldn't find one. I didn't have one at home. I have a quarter. But, and I have a brother Joe give me a lovely silver dollar. Amen. And uh, that's, that was very, very touching. I've still got that. And uh, amen. But I didn't have a dime. But there yesterday I got a dime and my change. And I thought, wow, yeah, there's a dime. Not too much scissor, a dime, not, not a lot of money. But you know, Rusty Goodman sang, I couldn't care less if I could buy the whole world, if I could buy it all with a solitary dime. For lately, I've got leaving. I've got leaving on my mind. So praise God that the U.S. Treasury can keep it all. Hallelujah. Do whatever they want with it. Hallelujah. Where I'm going, I ain't going to need uh, the U.S. Treasury to back me up. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Down here, if I'm going to go into summer for my dinner, I need them. But they're not up there. And I'm glad. Hallelujah. Yeah. Wonderful. Amen. Praise God. You know, I remember coming across and preaching on the real McCoy. The real McCoy. And you know, one thing God doesn't want. He doesn't want an imposter. He doesn't want you to be, te you know, like a number Allah, you know, oh, it's for show, it's all for show, and you've got this way about you, and you're number Allah, and then when the rain comes, you open it up, you got all full of holes, but you've covered them all up. He doesn't want you to be an imposter, amen, uh, or an impersonator, trying to be something that you're not. And, and I was thinking, I think it may have been Edwin, Edwin McCoy, but he was a real smart fella, a real smart dude, you know. And it used to be a way back, uh, maybe in the 80s, uh, 1870s or whatever, that all the trains in America used to have to stop after a certain time and they had to do some kind of uh, mechanics on them uh, to, to, to whatever it was, I'm not sure, but to get it up and running again and it could make the rest of the journey. And that guy looked at that and he said, no, that could be fixed. And he did. He came up with an invention, and he made it. Hallelujah. And the trains didn't have to stop anymore. Just whatever he did it, they fitted it up, and boom, boom, the train went from A to B without stopping in the middle. And they call that the real McCoy because people come in with impersonations. <laughs> Amen. You see, but thank God yeah. when he was smart enough to know the copyright, and he said, this is the real McCoy. Yeah. Amen. And right. when you've seen his trademark on it, you know you were getting the real thing. Right. Well, it's the same with us. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And we've got that mark of God on us. Amen. Hallelujah. That seal of God Amen. on us. Amen. And the devil sealed out and God sealed in. And that's the way it's going to be Amen. to the destination till we reach heaven home. Amen. And praise God. So that's wonderful. Hallelujah to know that. And if, if I may today, as we read that scripture and uh, I, was, I was preaching a, a few messages because I love to, what I usually like to do back home is I might preach some doctrine to, to my, my people. I like to do that. But sometimes, you know, you've come through a hard week. And really, you know, you don't really want to hear much about doctrine now. You're like, you're like everybody. We've all got feelings. We've all got emotions. And you know what I mean? And, and sometimes we like that little bit of cotton wool and just maybe a little bit of comfort, you know, to our own hearts. And God knows that as well. And that's why he does it. So praise God. You can, you can look at that there. I mean, I, I preached the message on thy loving kindness is better than life. Amen. Well, we spoke about a life today. Amen. The life that I lived. His loving kindness is far transcendent Amen. than the life we had. Right. Far Amen. transcendent. Yes. That's why I know it. In Ireland, with all the drugs and all the different things in this country as well, all the drugs and people don't realize that will never touch the soul. No. Not, there's not a drug made by man or the no. devil no. that will ever touch the soul of man. Right. It right. cannot do it. There's only Amen. one thing can touch that, Amen. and that's Jesus Christ Amen. himself, Amen. the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen, Amen, and Amen. And I'm, I'm glad to hear that, praise the Lord. And so... Amen. I was just thinking then, uh, well, I could go down that road or I could talk a, a wee bit about God keeping his appointments. But I just 
as I was in that this morning, some of the quotes, I thought I'll just go on a little bit today so as we can relax a little bit. Amen. And just sit back and let it soak in. Brother Branham used to say, I'll, I'll give you a little minute to let that soak in. You know, it's good. Hallelujah. Just let it soak in. Don't let it go over your head. You know, I, uh, I, you know, I, I really feel uh, as a minister, I, I, met a, I met a man up in Virginia. And uh, he came off the platform. He was up opening or closing a prayer. And, 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 and uh, as he got off the platform, I was sitting there on the left hand side, but Brother Charlie Spencer was beside me. And, uh, and he looked at me and he said, I know you. And I said, yes. Well, I didn't know him. So he said, yeah. He said, you came to our church. And I said, where was your church there? He says, in West Virginia. He said, you've got the wrong guy. I said, I don't think I ever preached in West Virginia. He said, you did. And I said, really? He said, yes. And he said, now this is lovely. And he said to me, he said, um, yeah. He said it was uh, uh, Brad Burgess up in uh, uh, Louisville. He said, he brought you over. I said, really? He said, I can't remember that. He said, you came. And he said to me something that I loved. He said, do you want me to tell you what you preached? Oh. <laughs> I said, well, I said, what did I preach? He said, you preached on restoration. Way back then, maybe 20 years beyond that, and I was preaching on restoration. Well, don't preach on that now because we've been restored. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> the full word's been restored to us, so praise God. But he could remember that. And I, I think there's something nice about that when somebody can remember what you said and can, can feed on that. Amen. Because it's a living word. It's, it's a living word. Hallelujah. Every day it's living and God can speak to you. That's one thing I like about being uh, retired to that extent. Because all what brother we had said today was true every bit of it and and you know when you're retired you get up in the morning you make your breakfast and i'll tell you what you can take your time if you have nothing else no appointments to go to or whatever not you can just take your time and read and my little dog will lie beside me amen and i'll read the scripture i'll read my uh, little uh, commentaries and pray and i'll tell you what don't you feel good after that amen. and you say oh but that's okay i've got a job to go to listen i get up about 7 o'clock, quarter past 7, for 22 years in the factory I worked in. And I never missed reading the Word of God. And I never missed praying right. before I went to work. Right. Right. Amen. And the girls on Monday morning, they'd be saying, Oh, Monday again, you know. And I said, it's a wonderful day. Hallelujah. Right. Praise go. God. Right. It's a wonderful day. This is the day the Lord has made. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm happy, yeah. you know. And, and so, so good. So God is good. Yeah. God is good to us. Amen. Because he loves us because we're part of him. We're part of the bride. Yeah. We're part of the bride. Just imagine that. Now, there are people who claim to be that. But where is their vindication of it? Right. Praise God. There's no, nobody ever came like, like Brother Branham came with a vindicated message. Right. And it's all in the tapes. I don't care what somebody said. He was in a coffee shop and he said this and that. I don't care about that there. I wasn't there. I never heard anything like that. But I've got all them messages like you had there. That's what you listen to. And you'll find out what he did say. Right. Praise God. Right. Not what somebody said he said. Right. Hallelujah. Amen. And that's, I, I, I loved old Billy Andrews. You know, Billy came and he opened our church for us. And, um, and we had a wonderful time, seeing a wonderful miracle at that time of a, of a fella. But uh, Billy would say, amen, he would say in his old Tennessee accent, he said, don't tell me what he said. Uh, don't tell me what he meant. Just tell me what he said. <laughs> you know, that's the way he would talk, you know, fast, you know. And uh, yeah, amen. Praise God. Praise God. And so it's wonderful. And you talk about demons. Demons, oh, demons will try and go sometime to you? Oh, they certainly will. And I remember when I was staying in his cabin and I saw where he, he f had fallen and I saw where he was injured and uh, my heart, he got out of it, I don't know, because you want to see the drop he fell. You know, but but he, he, got out, he, he came out of that and he had this uh, cast on for ages. And uh, anyway, that night I, I was sleeping and all of a sudden this thing come in through the window and it just stepped onto the bed and stepped onto the floor and just turned around. An awesome looking thing. And, you know, ugly. And, and just turned around looking at me and I said, get out and just kicked it like that in the name of Jesus Christ. And whoo, out he went. And you would be surprised, folks. You would be surprised uh -huh. that in these other countries, when people like God have needed deliverance, you'd be surprised how easy it is to get them off them spirits of them. Right. But 
Amen. You can go to a higher, what it really needs a lot, a lot of a, a prayer of faith to, to, to really touch people in a, da, a deeper situation. But my goodness, they're subject to the word of God. You see not there, can we enter into the pigs, you know, they're subject to the word of God. So amen. Christian living, our quotes for Christian living. You know, uh, he said, I've made many mistakes, done many things that was wrong, and, and desire uh, that, that you make not the mistake but don't look at your mistakes but use them as stumbling, not stumbling stones but as stepping stones stepping stones for yourself and for anybody else as a stepping stone, amen and that's why we can tell you praise God that he'll be faithful to you, you young people he'll be faithful to you if you just amen, let him get that Lordship in your life. Right. Amen. Amen. Praise Amen. God. So that has to be there, you know. And, and, and Brother Branham told that story about the young guy that went in to do the job. And I've met these kind of people. I'm sure you all have. And they're really smart, but they really think that they are it. You know, there's, you know this world couldn't go on without me. I'm, I'm, I'm here. And this old man was giving him an interview. And, and he said to him, he said, I, I noticed that you've got your, 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 your pencil there or not. And he said, but you don't seem to have an eraser on it. And he said, yeah. He said, I don't need an eraser. He said, I never make mistakes. And he said, well, I'm sorry, son, I can't use you. Just think about it. Amen. Praise God. If you turned around to me and said, Brother George, I've never made a mistake. I said, well, God bless you and help you. <laughs> Give you the eyesight to see that you did make mistakes. Amen. But he never judged you in your mistakes. Hallelujah. He never did that. He can cover that. Praise God. Amen. And amen. So, and also, a Christian don't try uh, to be what he used to be. Amen. No matter, even if you were successful, I love that little song where uh, he wrote, learning to lean. I'm learning to lean. Amen. Sad, broken hearted at the altar. You know why? Because his business had went totally belly up. He lost a lot. Amen. Oh my goodness. He thought God should be blessing my business, but he never put God first and he lost it all. Then he said, now what's it all about? And he got on his knees and he said, yeah, I was sad, broken hearted, but I learned what it's all about. Amen. Put God first, you know. And uh, amen. Um, whatever you are, and Brother Don was mentioned today, you see that business, Brother Don, amen. God will bless that business because he knows what you're doing for the work of God. And he'll bless anything that, that you do for that. Amen. And so praise God. Amen. And so we're, we're not looking back where we've been. Amen. That's easy done. But we're looking to where we're going. I mean, that's where your main focus is. We're looking where we're going. And God is not interested enough. Now think about it. God is not interested. When does he pull your past up? When? When is God ever? Can you say to me, now, Brother George, I know it was the Lord. And he told me that what I did like that was way back in the past. When did he ever do it? He doesn't do it. He doesn't work that way because he knows they're all in the safest forgetfulness forever. So, amen. Mistakes. I've made a few, as the song would say, but I'll tell you what. God's forgive them all. Hallelujah. And it's what you are, not what you were. Amen. Oh, I was a bad person. It doesn't matter what you were. It's what you are and where you're going and how God sees you. And God sees the finished article. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, hallelujah. He really does. Amen. And so, I uh, praise God. Amen. That's a, a thing. God is interested, not enough in your past to talk about it, but he's interested, very interested in your future. Amen. Because as Brother Branham said, it's a wonderful read. It's not just a quote like this. It's a wonderful read about that picture taken. In the mind of God, when you were just in that theophany, just young again, hallelujah, all the gray hairs going, amen, everything. And boy, what a day that'll be. And he's got that photograph of you, and that's what you're actually walking toward right now. Right now. Praise God. And do you know something, folks? I tell you what. If there was 500 people outside with a big placard saying, that's rubbish, we don't believe it. No, that's not true. I'd say well, get used to it, because <laughs> it is true. Amen. Hallelujah. Every word he said, I wouldn't tell you if it was not so. So praise God. Amen. And uh, uh, amen is powerful. He's not interested. Look at Job. Do you know, you'd think, you'd think if you looked at the life of Job, but very quickly, you, if you looked at the life of Job, and I'll talk about my wife as, as the Lord would lead me to do it, but our little photographs are out there on, uh, at the front, on the right-hand side beside the, the tape room just above it. And you can have a little look at her. My little, amen, uh, little darling, amen, praise God. And amen, so praise God, um, amen. But Job, 
you know, after, after all that suffering, you would think God would have a wee bit of a pity party for him, you know? Ah, oh, Job, I'm very sorry you went through all that. And you know what I mean? Like we were looking down here from heaven and really couldn't help you out, you know. Just, and it was sad on you, you know, really. The angels were even crying up here, you know, and seeing you going through that. He never did. He never did. He said, where were you? When I was doing the morning star was shouting for glory, you know. You're going to question me. It wasn't even me that put it on you, Job. Amen. And, and there he was. And he, he's talking like that. And then Job says, he says, oh my, I've spoken about things I know nothing about. Wow. And he see, put a zip on it. He said, I've, I've heard of you, with, but now I see my, your eyes and I repent in sackcloth and ashes. That's the way God does, does it. Amen. Praise God. So, hallelujah. Whatever you're coming through, whatever, Brother Samuel. Amen. And, and I, I don't want to say this about Brother Samuel today. Amen. Do you know, when I looked at his life, I said, I saw a Christian. I saw a genuine Christian, the real McCoy. And I saw it. I tell you, and that's one thing that ever struck me about him. That's a real man, a real, a real man of God. Amen. And praise God. That's absolutely right, Brother Don. A real man of God. Amen. And, and, and we come in life, we're not stupid. We come in life, we know we can't stay here on this earth before his coming. Amen. And I mean, I mean the, the, the physical corporal coming because he's come down in Revelation 10. Amen. How many in the, the denominations believe that? <laughs> well, they can believe whatever they do want. Well, we believe it because it happened and it's, it's, it's a reality. So, amen. There's no turning back from that. Amen. And so, praise God. Hallelujah. Yeah. And, and, and so, that's, that's the way it is. And uh, amen, praise God with Christ. It's wonderful. And he said, all Christianity is wrapped up in one big love affair. That's why I can stop here anytime I want because I don't have to go into all what's in here. But it's a love affair. You know, you, you, you do it because you I could say that to you. I said, do you love the Lord? You can say, amen, amen, I love the Lord. Yeah. I remember I was in uh, Thailand and there was three uh, girls to be baptized. And, and what happened is, you know, they didn't have very good English or nothing like that. And I've been in many situations where God's really helped me out of them. And so I, I, I'm getting into the water there, and it was a swimming pool, and getting into the water. And I said, now, what, what, I want a testimony. Now, what, what am I going to say to these girls? Because they don't, you know, they don't really know. And uh, so I'm standing there in the water, and the Lord just told me what to do. And I said to, her name was June, actually. There you are, so you have a counterpart. In Thailand. And she was the eldest girl. And I said, Sis, I said, June, I said, I want to ask you one question. And she's kind of the broken English, yes, yes, yes. I said, do you love the Lord? And she said, yes. I said, that's good enough for me. <laughs> Amen. Amen. If you love the Lord, I'll tell you what, that's good enough for me. If you just go in and say, Brother George, I love the Lord on the way out, I'll say, that's good enough for me. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And so we baptized the three girls that way, that day. Amen. I'll never forget that. Had some wonderful occasions in, in baptismal services, really. Like the, the, the time when I was, in the, I was going in to baptize these people. And she was a very smart girl, like a professor. She was a way up in that direction of, uh, wow, beyond 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 and for years she wouldn't be baptized and then one time I got there and her husband said she wants to be baptized I said oh good so we got a number of people down to the, it was like a big reservoir and we get in there and of course you're always going to get this the devil just like today didn't like that didn't like that message and I'll follow that girl believe me I'll follow to see how she gets on because we love her and she's a good girl and God will bless her amen and heal her and her hip and that need that she has what was manifested today amen and so you're always going to get these people just trying to muddy the waters so this fellow says to me do you know there's crocodiles in that lake I said really he said yeah so I said, well, I said, that's, that's nice to know that. I said, because if any of them want to be baptized, they're coming to the right place. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. The devil's a joke. Amen. Praise God. He really is. He said, he's a dumb, a dumb devil. Said, you know, that's a good, good title for him, a dumb devil. Amen. And so, praise God, it's wonderful. Amen. And uh, hallelujah. A, a, a genuine child of God doesn't care what the world says. Amen. It doesn't matter. I was there. 
I, I was there the night that I asked the Lord into my heart, and I felt that big weight lifting off me. Amen. And, and I'll tell you, young people as well, when I went in that night, when you're in a factory, it's a rough place, you know. Some, some rough boys are in there. And, and I told my mom first at breakfast that I asked the Lord into my heart, and she says, God bless you, son. And then years later, she came to the Lord, and, and she loved the Lord. And when I went up uh, to, to visit with her, she'd take my hand, I'd pray with her. Amen. And are, are you trusting in the blood? And could never get her baptized. Tried my best, amen, to get her baptized. But she said, no, she's too old. She couldn't. And so that, that's that. But I believe she's in a justified state. I believe that blood has never lost its power. Amen. And so we'll see her one, one time or other. Amen. But I'll tell you what, it'll be a happy day. Amen. amen. And so, praise God, we just press on, you know. And as you love one another, you love the Lord. That is the only test that you can give yourself. Amen. It's like if you, I don't suppose you do it so much now as test your oil. Maybe you do. Or maybe you just go into the garage and let them test it for you. But whatever. Amen. It has to be done to make sure that the oil level's still up high. And if you want to know where you are with God, you ask yourself, do I love my brothers and sisters? I know a church in Canada and the girl said, oh, there's a, a sister and she just gives me a bypass. Amen. And that's wrong. There's something wrong there. Amen. Praise God. You can at least say, God bless you and shake your hand. You might have a different personality. You might have different interests. But at least you can say, God bless you. Amen. We're, we're in the one body. Hallelujah. You might be a hair and she might be a nail, but you're still in the one body. So praise the Lord. Yeah. Love. Love is, is the thing. And, and Christianity is wrapped up a love affair. Amen. He said, don't you believe that? See, God is love. God is love. Amen. And, and, and that's something that you can't buy. You can't go into the grocery store and say, could I have no $2 worth of love? Amen. It's, it's deeper than that. Praise God. And, and it's wonderful. Hallelujah. To love your little partner. Amen. And I used to tell her that all the time. I said, I, 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 do you still love me? And she just look up with a little smile. And I said, I still love you. I said, you're the prettiest lady in this whole area. Amen. And, uh, and you know, yeah, yeah. My wee sweetie pie. That's, that would be an American expression. My wee sweetie pie. That's what she was. Amen. And so, praise God, I, I just thank the Lord for that, and I, it won't be long, amen, no matter what it's like, it won't be long, amen, so hallelujah, amen, and he said, you can't impersonate love, uh, that's true, amen, there's no way, there's no way somebody could come and put their arms around Brother Wade and say, I love you, Brother Wade, and he knows they didn't. There's no way. You, just, you can't impersonate it. Praise God. It either resonates with you or it doesn't. If you've got genuine love, it'll be seen. Amen. And you won't need to ask your wife. But don't be afraid to tell her you love her. Amen. Even today. Yes, saying, I love you. Amen. Amen. And don't be ashamed of saying, and I love you too. Yes. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. So, so that, that's wonderful. Amen. And a man's character. You know, I love that. Because Brother Branham got that straightened out for me anyway, where, where James said that you're justified by your works. And you're thinking, that's a contradiction. And the Bible don't contradict itself, you know. And you find that, that, that Mo, uh, the, uh, Abraham's faith justified him. So how could faith justify you and works justify you? They're two different things. But that was to do with his salvation. The, the faith was to do with the covenant that he made with God. That's what that faith was. And, and God accepted him because of that. But when you come on into the story, and just think about it, that here he is, well, uh, Ishmael's gone, and here's my son Isaac, how wonderful, and I'll just sit back and put my feet up, and here he comes, and then one day God says, yes, and I want you to take him up to Mount Moriah and kill him. And you say, what? Amen. And, and, and he did it. It's a real Bible story. You know they're true. You know they're true. They're not just made up, you know. People say, oh, there was no Abraham, there was no King David and all that. And then they find out that there was. Hallelujah. But praise God. Amen. That was wonderful. And he took him up. And what, what touches me about that story was he says to the young man, he said, now the lad and I are going yonder to sacrifice and we Amen. will come yes. again. Amen. That man believed that he would receive his son back even yes. if he was killed. Amen. Imagine that. Amen. I tell you what, you're glad that God doesn't put that on you today. Amen. You're glad God wouldn't put that on you today. But you know, he did it. And, and, and then that's why it says, uh, and Abraham was justified by his works. He obeyed the voice of God. And to obey is better than sacrifice. Amen. Right. You know, sometimes the chain can be broken. Amen. And you know, if you have a chain, if you've got sometimes the uh, sisters might wear a little chain of something, but if you break it, it's, it's broken. 
that's just you can't you know it's all going to fall apart and 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 you know circumstances the chain of circumstances you know uh can can be very rough at times you can be in you could tell me like you're in a bad circumstance amen and you might be but listen praise god it's how you deal with it all in your circumstance. Amen. That, you know, there was, the story goes in the war that two prisoners was there and one of them was eating his heart out because all he could do was look down and he could see mud. But this other fella, he had a different way of looking. He said when he looked, he didn't look down at the mud. He looked up and he saw the stars. And he was planning that I'm one day I'm going to get out of here and this is what I'm going to do. And praying about it and God got him out and he did exactly what he had, his heart's desire was. So, amen. Uh, that's wonderful. And circumstances are just God uh, in control of your situation. He knows what the, the way you're going. Amen. And uh, praise the Lord. Uh, the little missing coin, you know, she swept the house as she got it. Because you know what that was, really. And it's the same with you. Uh, uh, that they they wore the, the chain up here of, of the little coins. That was their marriage. That was their marriage ring. Right. That showed exactly. that is a marriage. That woman is married. Don't you touch her. She's married. Hallelujah. And so when she left that, lost that coin, this was going to be a disgrace to her. Mary, the priest says, that was your coin. And that's why she swept the house so much till she got the coin and said, rejoice with me. Hallelujah. I found that coin that was lost. So circumstances can play on you, but get over that and get through that because they will change. They will change. Everything changes. Amen. And so, praise God. Hallelujah. It's like the, the dynamo. Amen. The electric. Amen. And the electric wire. Well, you put the two wires on wrong and see what happens. You might get a big bang. Boom. <laughs> you know, you got to have it done right. Like we said, the, 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 the letters today, the numbers, you have to get them right. Amen. And praise God. If your wire's dead, he said, and there's no current to it, what good is it? What good's having a, a battery? And it tells you what it'll do if you haven't got it wired up right. Amen. It's absolutely, absolutely not. Amen. So praise God, let's go on for a little bit. Amen. You know, because it's a hard, hard thing to comprehend. But, you know, when the Holocaust was going on and people were being butchered for their faith, you know, you see some, some of the, the documentaries of them going and maybe the mama going along with her little girl and that little girl doesn't even know what's happening. And she's going to go into a gas chamber and they're going to take her life. My goodness, like a little girl down there. What about that? What about that? Amen. And God called that the tender hand of Jehovah. Like, folks, we, we are, one day we'll know as we are known. But we don't know it all down here. We don't know it all down here. But I'll tell you what, just to know that God deals with you in love. Everything, no matter if your house burned down today, I tell you, I wouldn't like that to happen to you. But my goodness, God is in control of your life completely and totally. Amen. And you let him be that. Amen. And praise God. And that's when he can show you his love for you. And just think about all them people. Say, well, Brother George, that was terrible. It was. But where were they after five minutes after they were killed? Amen. They were under the altar. Hallelujah. And, and wasn't that a blessing when you read that and Brother Brown was preaching on the seeds and said, souls under the altar. Hallelujah. They weren't Christians. They're, these people are asking for vengeance. That's Jews. Amen. And, and it's getting all straightened out for us. Hallelujah. And thank God for that. And he gave them new raiment. Amen. And waiting for that day when their brothers will join them. Amen. And that day's coming for Israel too. The Naomi has to come to Ruth. Amen. And praise God. Amen. And she'll be that. Hallelujah. So, so many just wonderful things. Amen. And uh, anything that doesn't serve God's purpose has no resurrection. That's what he says. But you uh, can't keep anything in the ground that serves God's purpose. And you know, I've, I've done it. I proved it myself uh, because my, my wife, she was a, raised as a country girl. She loved cattle. She loved sheep. Even the last day of her life, I had her out, and she was our little lambs, and she, they would all look at her fingers. Amen. Just, just maybe half an hour before she died. And, and I'll tell you what. Amen. That's the kind of girl she was. And she used to love potatoes. And of course, I'd say to her, Jacqueline, you do not need to do that. And she'd just make part of the we plenty of place where she could do it, but it was so big for her to do. And, and I said, you don't have to do that. And uh, amen, she wanted to do it, so she did it. Well, then after she plants the potatoes and covers them over, then it comes to the place where after a couple of weeks, you have to dig up again and recover them. And sometimes you would see that seed potato that you'd put in there. 
and you find that it's just mush. Just mush. And you're thinking, how could new potatoes come out of that? And the brother was on about it today. Amen. Where he spoke about that germ of life still in that seed. That's still there. And that you cover that all up again and you come back in so many months and you've got a crop of yeah. lovely potatoes. Amen. That life's there, folks, and it's in you too. And Brother yeah. Bottom, talk about it. Even if you went back to gases, I tell you, your theophany will join up with your resurrection yeah. money yeah. one day. Yeah. It's coming. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. It's down the track. Amen. It's coming uh, uh, to us. Hallelujah. Amen. So praise God. And um, amen to us. I, I, I love it. You know, as a Christian, uh, Never take anything for granted. Right, right, right. Never let the word of God get common to you. Right, right. Amen. And, and you might say, well, I know everything that he said. I know it. I've got a head knowledge of it. But put it into action in right. your life. Amen. 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 Live it out. Right. That's what the whole point is. Amen. Not just a head knowledge, but a heart knowledge. Right. Amen. Amen. And praise God. Faith is to the where? To the soul. Amen. That's the faith is to the soul. Praise God. And when you're a Christian, you ought to. I had time yesterday when I'm coming by uh, Lake Hartwell and up and out there to look over a little glance and say, it's beautiful, Lord. It's beautiful, Lord. Any place that remains untouched by human hands, it's beautiful. Hallelujah. And that's why I love them places like that. And I, I look out at the sea coming in every day at our place. It comes in, it goes out, it comes in, it goes out, never misses. Hallelujah. And, and I just thank God for the mountains. I thank God for the valleys. And I thank God for his creation. And what a time when the curse is lifted off his creation. What a day that will be. Amen. All the animals. You know, your Bible is is a unique book. I mean, you're not going to read the, the Quran and where it turns around saying, and the lion will lay down with the lamb and they'll feed the gather on straw. A lion eating straw. Oh, you've got the wrong lion. No, I haven't got the wrong lion. Hallelujah. That's what God's word says. Scripture cannot be broken. And one day you'll see it. One day you'll see it. And the little child in that millennium, a hundred years of age, you'll see it. It's thus saith the Lord. Praise God. It's wonderful, you know. And uh, amen. So, hallelujah. Now, could I say this? Amen. Well, even when, with, with, with Abraham, God gives you signs. Amen. And that's when I came down today. I was so glad to see that sign outside the church. Yeah. Where it's, you know, amen. Uh, the, the spoken word, amen, church. Amen. I said, oh, here I am. Yeah. Amen. And, and you just go by the directions. Folks, you know where I live. And there's a big, what we call, you might call it a turnaround or a roundabout. But we've got, we've got them there in, in, in Ireland. And, um, and just below our house, they made a bypass. And I'm glad they did it the, day, the way they did it. And we've got a roundabout. And I would tell people, I mean smart people, educated people, uh, and a university professor like. And I'll tell you what I tell them now. You come round the roundabout, you go toward Donegal Town, and 300 meters, or let's say 350 yards down from that roundabout, you'll see a little turn off that leads up to my house. And they'll phone me two miles later and say, where's your house? So somebody wasn't listening. <laughs> somebody wasn't listening. Amen. I mean, if I had went on to what McDonough or whatever, Tokai or whatever you call that, you know what I mean? I was listening. But I was listening. And when I seen the, 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 the road, that's where he said, turn off. So I turned off and followed the directions. And it leads you to the pro proper place. Amen. So because he's uh, supernatural, he always deals with people through signs. You know, can I tell you something that you might be interested in? I was in... Up in Nepal. I love Nepal. You, it was so peaceful. It was beautiful. And they were a different people than the Indian people. Different people. Poorer people, but happier people. And anyway, so we were up there, and uh, one afternoon, uh, the children were down there, a lovely day, and, and they're playing down there just below the house. And you climb up a little ladder, and then there's a little kind of a, 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 a platform going around the house. You could walk around and the door into the house. That was all up on the, on the things like that. So I was sitting there at the door, and uh, something just quickened me to get up. So I got up, and I'm stretching myself, and I went around the side of the house. And I looked up, and I nearly fainted, because on their highest mountain, there was a cloud. Now, this is true. God knows I wouldn't tell you a lie. And I looked at that cloud, and it was the perfect shape of Ireland. 
perfect ship of Ireland. And there, the, you know, if you look at Ireland, you see the five, the five toes at the bottom. And you'll see right up to where Donegal is. And right up there in Northern Ireland, the largest lake in the UK is in Northern Ireland. It's dying at the minute, but it's there. And I could see that in that cloud, that blue place, right exactly where it ought to be. Now, that was on a 15,000 foot mountain. And we were right up. I don't know how close we were to it. But I could see that. That cloud was there. And I run over and run round and I pulled out my camera and run back and took it. And, and you know, people were saying, what was that all about? What? And I said, I don't know. I said, I don't know what it was. I said, but I will be praying. I'll go home and pray about it. And I did come home and pray about it. And you know what I, what I got from that? Amen. That here we were, the highest mountain was a representative of the bride. We are the highest mountain. We are the highest form. Praise God. The wife, nobody comes above the wife. Hallelujah. And so we are the wife of Christ. Now, and so there it was. And as I looked at that mountain, I could see the highest mountain. And that was the bride that was in Nepal. That's who we were ministering to. And then I say, well, what has Ireland got to do with it? And he said, because the messenger that I sent, just not a messenger, but the, the vessel that I used came from Ireland. Amen. Amen. And I'll tell you what, folks. Amen. The photograph I got, because it was 15,000 feet high, and, and clouds don't going to sit there for an hour waiting for you to phone, 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 take a photograph. But I got it just as it was going off the mountain like that. Amen. I'll never forget that all the days of my life. And that was the translation, the interpretation of it. Amen. What a wonderful, supernatural. You know, you shouldn't be afraid of, of supernatural things. Our brother Wayne Lawson, I love brother Wayne. I think he's a great man of God. And, and Wayne was saying sometimes, hey, you might be going through the church here and you might feel a little bump and you look around and you think somebody bumped you. said, you bumped into an angel. Amen. Amen. Praise God, that's right. You can expect the angels. They're in, they're in your home. They're in and around this. They never leave this place. They never leave this place. Praise God, never do. And so this, he deals with people through signs, scriptural signs. Look, uh, if you've got the Holy Ghost in you, then you're a candidate for the association with the unseen world Amen. and the supernatural. Yeah. If you've got the Holy Ghost in you, Amen. you're going to see the supernatural yeah. working. Amen. 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 And I love that. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God to have that confidence that to know that God sent me. Hallelujah. You know, Brother Bottom mentioned that when you talk about things like that. And all them years, two and a half million, I never, I couldn't even imagine what it cost to do that. But, but I tell you, he met the need. He met the need. Hallelujah. And so, uh, when you're dealing with the supernatural, praise God. Brother Branham said, now if your denomination sent you there, they'll have to pay up. Right. He said, but if God sent you there, he'll take care of you. Right. And it's always been that way. Hallelujah. It's always been. I've never seen a time. You say, have you ever been afraid when you've been? Never. Never, never been afraid. And, 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 and we used to see him. He's been in some places. Never had an ounce of fear about you. Because you knew God sent me. He'll take care of us. And he will do what he wants to do. Because you're surrendered to it. Amen. A supernatural. Amen. The super sign. Praise God. I could say more than that. But my goodness. A real child of God doesn't mind the whippings. You know, that's a good thing, isn't it? The chastisements. For whom the Lord loves, he chastises. You know, if you need a little slap... He will give you it. Praise God, he'll give you it. Put it this way. He will keep you on your toes. I love that. You probably remember Harold Hildebrand that was up in Canada in Edmonton. And, and, and I preached for Harold and I said that. And he loved that. He said, oh boy, does he keep you on your toes? I said, that's right. Because if you think you're just going to yawn and sleep it off there, you know, in Pilgrim's Progress, uh, that's what happened. They were going along and the road was getting a bit rough, a bit hard to walk on. The next thing is, uh, one of them looked down and faithful or something and said, hey, you know, down there's a path beside the road. It looks easier. Ah, oh, well, let's go down. They started walking along this path, and it was easier. Nice, easy way. And then the next thing is, amen, praise God, a little yawn. <gasps> oh. And then the next thing is they fall asleep on the easy path. And the next thing they woke up and they're shaken by the big giant. I got you. Hey Amen. Who are you? Who are you? I'm the giant to spare. And you're going into the, the prison of, of Doubting Castle. You doubted God that he would take you through the hard way. Amen. But I've got you now. And it was only that after they beat them every day. And his, his wicked wife would say to the giant, uh, did you see them? Yeah. Did you beat them again? He said, I sure did. Amen. And one 
safe. Uh, uh, Pilgrim says, I've had enough of this. Amen. I've had enough. Praise God. There has to be a key to this. You know, when he thought about it, and he said, oh, yes, he said, faith's the key. If we can lo- unlock this prison of doubt, faith will unlock it for us. And he unlocked it. And the big giant was out there, and they run away from him. My goodness, that's what it took to get out of giant despair. So, hallelujah, don't just go for the easy way. Sometimes God calls you on a harder way. Amen. And, and praise the Lord. Amen. So if he's going to chastise you, well, just let him do it. Let him do it because he, he'll do it in love. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I'll tell you a story about over in Missouri. Amen. Praise God, but I won't tell you today. If you want to hear about it, I'll tell you. Ask me personally, you know, because it's not a great story. <laughs> Amen. But but faith does work by love. Praise God. Amen. And that's it, as I said about that girl, that sweetness just came over us that night. And I'll tell you what, I was thinking, Lord, you know, when Brother Branham was up there in the, what town was it? I passed the church one time where the girl was playing on the piano or the organ, and, and the next thing is she sees one of her relations being healed, and she stopped playing, and it kept playing. The great physician now is here, the sympathizing Jesus. Oh, I'll tell you what, folks, amen. That faith works by love, and if you didn't love the people, if you didn't love the people, you have no business praying for them. And that's God's honest truth. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And so, hallelujah. Now, as your faith is, so be it unto you. This is not Christian science. Amen. Faith works by love. It's re- they're relations. And they are relations. Faith and love work together. Amen. You can't have faith unless you've got love. Amen. Because your faith is in God who is the very essence of love. Amen. That's his divinity is. And, and love work together. So amen. Any Bible believer punctuate. Every one of these promises of God with an amen. Somebody said there's about 600 in the book. I don't know. I never counted them. But I'll tell you what, when God's speaking to you, and, and you know, that's, look, could I just say this as, a, as something that you might be able to use in your own life. You, you may say, no, I'm looking for direction in my life. And I would say, get on your knees and pray to God. Right. And ask him for one thing. Ask him to speak to you. Right. And that'll settle it. I mean, that will settle it. Praise God, it's settled. I remember I was in India, and this brother and sister came, and they said, we want you to pray for us for a child. They're a married couple. And, and I said, yes, I'll be glad to do it. I said, but I can't promise you that God will do it. But I will pray with all my heart that you'll get a child. And so, you know, and I didn't realize, folks, sometimes you don't realize, but that this was a tough task. Because I found out later that neither he nor she could actually, if one of them had been all right, the other one wouldn't have been. But both of them weren't all right. And this is going to really take something. Yeah. And, and, you know, so I prayed for them that God would give them the child. And, um, amen, the very next morning, I was there in prayer and reading the scriptures. And it's, I've still got it, not in this Bible, in my last one. Amen. And right on the date when it happened, that the next morning I was reading, and it said, I have heard your prayer. And it just jumped out and hit me like, oh, woo! Right. Amen. And I got onto the phone, and I said to that girl, I said, hear what God has said. Prepare the booties. The child's coming. Hallelujah. Amen. Prepare them. You can pick the, the color. I don't care about that. You've asked for a child. God has heard the prayer. Amen. And you say, what happened? I'll tell you what happened. They had a little son. They called him Stephen. He just says, no, hallelujah. And he's a real good boy. Amen. And I thank God I'm part of that. Hallelujah. Part of it. Amen. So that's wonderful. Amen. And, and praise God. So, hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. I've sworn by myself I will bless you and multiply you. Amen. That's why I wanted it to be easier today. Just in the afternoon session. Because uh, after t- this morning. Amen. Just to be nice and cozy to talk about these glorious things that we believe. But we believe. Hallelujah. Amen. And uh, praise God. Uh, you know, <laughs> Ronald always talked about Muhammad Ali, you know. And, and this guy gave him such a bang one day when he was boxing. And the guy turned around. Muhammad Ali says, he turned around and he said, is that all you've got? <laughs> 
Well, I'll tell you what. Amen. Woo. I had to say that, you know. Like if that's all you've got, you ain't got enough. Amen. I'm going to thrash you in a couple of minutes here. You know. So, hallelujah. Now, you look about the devil and see what he can do. The, as I was saying to uh, uh, Richard earlier, that one time I was in India, and, and we were in a village, and they had all this microphone. It was so noisy. Eight o'clock, nine o'clock at night. And I said, you don't need all that. Amen. Just the people are here and just a microphone. I'll talk to them and we'll preach to them. But you don't need all that. Well, somebody got offended, called in the police. The police arrived. The next day, I was nearly arrested, but I wasn't. But I had to give over my passport. But he took a copy of that. And thank God that captain was a Christian himself. And he said to Brother Freddie, he said, now if he preaches or baptizes anybody, he'll be arrested and deported. Well, I just turned around to the people when they left, the police left, and I didn't know what was going to happen. But I said to them, I said, you know, the lion has got me in its mouth. Move. That's a bad place to be. <laughs> Would you not agree? <laughs> the lion's got you in his mouth. I said, now we're going to find out, can he close his mouth? There's the killer punch. There's the killer punch. Amen. Amen. You know, Brother Brandon was talking about the deer. That deer gets the water. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, my, my. And you know something? He couldn't close his mouth. Because he failed. Amen. Amen. Do you know why? I'll tell you why he failed. Because a prophet said, God bless your ministry in India. That's the only reason he failed. Hallelujah. He tried to come against that, and he found he couldn't do it. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 There's more than one person that's been put out of India that came in with a message and been sent out. So just wonderful. Hallelujah. And, and thank God we, we, that we can take whatever he throws at us, whatever snares, too many dangerous toils and snares. Uh, we've already come, and it's just, it's just good. It's just wonderful. Let me see what the time is here. Praise God. I think it's nearly time to, to stop. Amen. But it just could go on and on, you know. I, we love talking about the Lord. You know, you, 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 if you had been, I don't know what they thought about us last night, you know. We're having something to eat together and we're just talking and, you know, and and uh, I, I, I remember being up at Brother Dutch's one time and you could hardly get through the foyer and some of them were outside. And I said, boy, I said, they like, love to talk after the meeting, don't they? He said, they sure do. He said, they're just licking the honey off each other. <laughs> <They're> just, <laughs> that's it. Amen. And when you're here in church and you're singing away, you might think, well, I love that song. But you're singing that song to somebody here in the meeting. You're singing it. Yeah, you're encouraging them. They're encouraging you. They're singing it back. And it's wonderful just to be in the presence of God. Hallelujah. Enjoying his blessings. Feeding on that body word. Praise God. Knowing that these things are true. Hallelujah. And what am I going to do tomorrow morning, that Monday? You're going to be just like you are today. Because you love him. And he'll be there tomorrow as he is today. He'll be there for you every day of your life. Amen. So praise the Lord. Keep your heart. Many snares, many dangers, but he's brought us through them all, and I'm so thankful for that. There's one time when I was over in Nepal, and they had uh, one of the, it was just like the rain falling these days, they had a massive flood. And so uh, all the bridges had been washed away. And goodness, you could see when we were there, you could see where the water had come up. Millions of tons of it had come down the, the way. So we were going to preach in this little place called Hardy and uh, you had to cross the river now I've crossed the river where you could nearly throw a stone over it but this time it was swollen and and this man said to me again he said when we were up at the top he said where are you going I said over to Hardy he said no you're not I said well we've got a meeting over there that's all I know and he said you're not going over there today but boy we went down and I said I don't know we'll see and and we saw this little canoe starting over and the boys would start rowing as hard as they could upstream. And then they would go over a little bit like that. And then whatever way they'd do it, they let the thing come around like that. And then they paddled like anything and they landed at the dock. So they landed on the other side. In other words, there was no dock. And so here I am. I always carried my passport and any little funds I had and things like that. You could be your mobile phone today, but I didn't have a mobile phone then. But I'll tell you one thing. For the first time in my life, I took that case and put it at my feet. And I said, if this doesn't go right, then I'll not need that anymore. I crossed that river. Praise God. I've risked my life a number of times for this message. I really have. 
praise God. Yeah. But God did get us over. Yeah. And you may say, oh, well, that was great. Yeah. What would have happened coming down from the Himalayas if one of them big logs had come down and you're turning and it just smashed into you? Yeah. You'd have been gone because you'd have never got out of it. Never. Right. But God got us over. God got the meeting taken care of, and God got us back. Hallelujah, and he's a faithful God. Hallelujah, that's all I can say. Amen. Okay, praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, I'm glad that you're doing the seven virtues because it's lovely. Amen. Add to your faith. Amen. That virtue, that life. Who touched me, you know? That little woman. Do you think she wanted to come at the end and be before him. She just wanted to touch him and get the healing and just slip out of the crowd and go home healed. But you know, no, no. He said, no, 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 sister. I want to talk to you. Amen. And I love it. And you know when that old Pharisee, what you're listening to today, that old Pharisee at the end of it, he said, if he knew who she was, and remember with the money that she was getting the alabaster box with, and she said, just say, just say, he won't accept this. Because he knows where the money came from. But he did accept it. Hallelujah. What a savior. Amen. And that old Pharisee there, that old hypocrite, God does, hates hypocrisy. And here he was, and he turned around and he said, if he knew who she was, he wouldn't touch her. Wrong. Amen. For he'll touch everybody that wants to be touched. Hallelujah. The leper, it don't matter. He'll come to your home. If you want him, look. If you want him in tomorrow, he'll be in tomorrow. Believe me. Praise God. You just want your heart, every, your life, every bit of you. If you want him, he'll never say no. Hallelujah. Never say no. And she came. And at the very end of it, when he had his, and the Lord talked to that old Pharisee, he said, what about that? Amen. What about that? And uh, that, that, that woman, uh, uh, and he said, you know, there was somebody that owed 500 pence and somebody owed 50. And they went to the creditor and he, he forgave them for it. He said, who do you think loved him the most? Right. Well, the one that would, had the most to pay. Correct. That's exactly correct. Right. He said, she loved a lot in this world. Yeah. She loved a lot in this world. He said, and to whom loves much, love is owed. Yeah. Amen. And I'll tell you what. And he just turned to her. You just think about this. This is the Lord Jesus. He just turned to that little woman. And he said, Thy sins, which are many, are forgiven thee. And this is what he said. Never mind the Pharisees. He never said that. But he said, Go in peace. That's the way I want you to walk out of this church today. Yeah. Blessed, thinking, I'm glad I was there. Yeah. Not because, if, look, right. if Brother Wade had said to me this morning, Brother George, all night God's been dealing with me. I, I think he wants me to really, now he wants me to speak. Uh, do you mind? I would have said, go ahead. I mean that. I would have said, go ahead. Praise God. If that word of God came to you, don't worry. You give it. You deliver it. Right. Amen. It doesn't matter who brings it. It's, as long as God's speaking through their mortal lips Amen. and you get something that's real, that's Amen. eternal. Amen. Amen. It's going to bless your heart. Amen. Hallelujah. And uh, it doesn't matter where you are, whether you're in Ireland or in Lula, Georgia. It doesn't matter where you are. Praise God if you're gathered in his name. Yes. Hallelujah. He'll be there to bless you. Yes. Amen. I, I can't, I can't. Folks, I tell you what, uh, you know, I, I remember one time uh, uh, there was a a brother over in Tucson, and he said to me that he only listened to the tapes, and no disregard for that. I listened to tapes. You were listening to one this morning, and today, but I saw that. But he said to me, brother, I listened to the tape. He says, no. He says, because I know that's going to be anointed. I said, that's right. And he said, now, can you say that every time you preach? It's going to be anointed. I said, well, I said, let me put it this way, brother. If I can't say that, I have no business preaching. Amen. Amen. If the anointing of God is not on your preaching, you have no business standing behind the, po- the, 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 the desk. Amen. But notice what the prophet said to me. God bless your ministry. And Paul says, I thank God he counted me faithful. Counted me faithful, placing me in the ministry. So these all are beautiful things. And amen. The garment. Amen. The change of garment that he's given us today. I could go on for woo. Another five, what, four pages? All these lovely little thoughts that I thought I'd just bring to you today. Amen. Just as we gathered around. Because I know what it's like, you know, what you've, you've just ate, and it's, it's hard, and it's warm, too. It's getting warm. Amen. But, boys and boys, it's just wonderful Amen. to be with. And what you've heard today, I simulate it. 
and pray for our sister that was went into hospital today and, and, and God bless you. And when we're singing our clothes in him, you might have a little need that you want. Don't be afraid to come out. Amen. Don't be afraid. You, there's nothing to be afraid of. Hallelujah. Perfect love casts out fear. Praise God, it really does. And if you don't, if you're okay, you're okay. Praise God. Because I remember when we were in India and, and the place where they were in, I was shaking hands with people that asked me to pray. And I'd, I'd pray just as they were going to leave and out to church. And then I realized, now hold on a wee minute, something's gone wrong, wrong here. Because that person passed me a couple of minutes ago. <laughs> and they went round the back and into the queue and come round again. So I said, I'll be here all day praying for people. They're going to do that. But if that's what they wanted to do, I don't care. Amen. If I, you know, I'm at the door shaking your hand, I don't care. If you say, would you please pray for me? I'll pray for you. Be short, sweet, but I'll do it. Amen. Praise God if that's what you want. Amen. And, and so, hallelujah. It's just wonderful. And so many things, so many beautiful things. Amen. Praise the Lord. The grace of God, the gifts of God that he puts into our life. And, and it's just wonderful. I'm glad I am what I am. I'm glad I'm going where I'm going. I'm glad he brought me from where I was. He looked beyond my fault. He saw my need. Hallelujah. And I'm glad I'm a son of God. I'm glad for this message. I love it. Hallelujah. To bits. Amen. There's nothing like it on the face of this earth. Amen. And Elijah, praise God, that brought it. Uh, amen. Uh, to us. Amen. And I believe Brother Branham was that Elijah in our day. I believe it with all my heart. And that's the way I'm going to go. I've seen my loved ones believing that and going that way. And I, I go the same way. I believe it with all my heart. Did he fulfill Revelation 10:7? Amen. Amen. Absolutely. He was the messenger. And if he wasn't, you tell me who was. You tell me who was. Amen. Praise God. So there he was head and shoulders. Uh, 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 the vindication of it all. Amen. You know, uh, when, when Brother Branham just had only a, a couple of uh, uh, days, weeks to live, and he was in his... Uh, uh, as Dan, and he had Dawson Riley over with him, and the guns and all the things that people had given him, and he was asking Dawson, and where do you think this should go, and all that, and he was explaining about Blondie that he called, because his wife was a brunette, so he called the gun Blondie. Amen. There you go. <laughs> and, uh, amen. Uh, so, there he was. And he turned around to Brother uh, Dawson, and he said, you know, he said, have you ever heard of, and he named out the rifle, maybe I'll just say uh, an X-85 uh, or something, it's a Czechoslovakian or one of them countries that really made good, good. Did you ever hear of that? He said, I do believe, Brother Bram, yeah, yeah, I, I think I've heard of that. And he said, do you know? He said, uh, sometimes I get gifts. And he said, really? He said, yeah. And he said, and the people that send them don't think I know who sent them. And Dawson said, really? He said, so let's come and we'll go and eat. So they went and had lunch, come back. So there they were working. Brother Branham was down below. And I won't be a couple of more minutes. But here he was. And uh, the, the, the door bell rang. And he went out the FedEx, I believe it is, does your parcels. And he said, uh, William Branham? He said, no, sir, he's upstairs, but I'll sign for it. He said, okay. Handed it over. <laughs> sign for it came up. And he's carrying it upstairs and wonder what's in this, you know. Brother Branham said to him, Brother Dawson, why don't you open it? And of course, as he began to open it, he began to think, <laughs> you know, and he said, that's all he could do. He's going, <laughs> because what was it? Exactly the same rifle that Brother Branham had mentioned. And it had come. And he says, now he said, the person that sent that Brother Dawson doesn't know. He thinks he doesn't. I don't know who it was. He said, but I do know. That gift was in operation all his life. Amen. All his life. God never took it from him. Never. Amen. From a child when he had his first little vision. Amen. And right to the time he went to be with the Lord. Praise God. He fulfilled what God had from. Because why? Briefly, let me finish with this. Amen. And I'll just say this. Because the word had to come to the bride. Amen. That was all about when the prophet was there on the land, it had to come to the prophet. But when the prophet left, the word had to come to the bride. Hallelujah. And that's exactly how it is. That's why we can say the word is Christ living in that bride. Amen. Today, praise the Lord, we are uh, uh, Christ in, in, in physical form. That's what we are because uh, Jesus Christ is living in us. I, I was stopped uh, one time in a patrol and the guy, the policeman, he 
reached over to talking to us real close to uh, see if we'd been drinking or anything. I didn't make any mistakes, but that's the way he did his job. Okay. And so this was in Ireland. And so, amen, as he was bending over like that, and I knew what he was doing. And I, I'm thinking to myself, you know, son, that's the closest you may ever but get to Jesus Christ. Yeah. You say, oh, Brother George, that's a terrible thing to say. Why would it be a terrible thing to say if he's living in my heart? Amen. Amen. Why if he's living inside me? Why would it be a terrible thing to say? Yep. Praise God. Amen. And I hope it was. I hope he could get closer again in his amen. life. Yep. But amen. He was close that night. Yep. <laughs> amen. Because I just come out of a mountain. <laughs> so, oh. <laughs> Amen. It's just wonderful, you know. And, uh, and, and I do thank you. And, and Brother Don sent over a lovely uh, uh, card to us in which we really appreciate it uh, coming over to Ireland just to... So even, even on Friday, past as I told you today, that people are still commiserating with me. I meet them. People I, I haven't met all from all over the place and saying, we heard about your wife and we're so sorry. And it's Catholics and Protestants. There's no, no big difference. And I'll tell you what, I'm just so thankful for that. Yeah. Amen. And how the, the whole, what strengthened us was how the whole community rallied around us. Now, there was people in that, that I know the Protestants won't go to a Catholic church where we live. And I know that Catholics find it very hard to come into what they would call a Protestant church. But I tell you, they came. People that she had been raised with, what went to school with, amen, or friends that she worked with that were Catholics, they all came and paid their respects. And any that was there that day, I never seen the like of it, where that white, milky fire cloud came settling over the people at my little darling wife's funeral. And what a send off she got that day. It was just so beautiful, amen. And to lower her down into the ground and saying, it's not goodbye. It's just good night. I'll see you. I'll meet you at the Eastern Gate, just inside the Eastern Gate over there. Oh, what a happy reunion that will be, you know. And, you know, when you talk about the, your, 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 ten, your dimes, your ten cents, amen, praise God, and how, why. Do you know, you mightn't believe me. You really mightn't. But I can tell you this. If a man offered me a million pounds or dollars, to reject what I've got tonight, I would not do it. And nor would he. No. Nor would he. No. We wouldn't do it. No. Because our interest in, is not in that. No. Praise God. Right. But we have got our mind focused on things above yeah. and what is to be. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. What is to be. And what is surely coming. Yeah. Amen. And it may, I don't know how long it's going to go on. But oh folks, just you watch Russia. Watch Israel. Yeah. Amen. Just watch it. Just keep your eye peeled over there. Amen. And one golden day break, yeah. Jesus will come. Yeah. For as sure as he came the first time, yeah. the same Jesus yeah. will come the second time. Yeah. Amen. I you know, I'm just finishing off now, but I might not get back here again, but I might. Amen. Maybe my daughter or something will come over and drive or whatever, uh, but I'm, I'm happy enough driving at the moment. But praise God, I'll tell you what, uh, if, if I never meet again on this earth, my precious friends, amen, I'll meet you in the rapture because it's coming. Hallelujah. It's coming. Amen. And that body change when that theophany will, amen, just like Jesus, Brother Branham says, it was always with him. Praise God. That's right because it's the, the body. It's the theophany. God's body was right there. Christ was in that man right there, the fullness. Just wonderful. And praise the Lord with us. It's not that way. Uh, praise God. That, but, but my my, what a day it'll be yeah. when, when we're changed and that theophany meets that resurrected yeah. body Amen. to be ever with the Lord. Yeah. Are you looking forward to that? Yeah. I know you're living for that, yeah. and so am I. Yeah. Praise God, you're living for that. And Sister Anne yeah. shared with me today about Brother Al, and we love Brother Al. And we love Brother Dick, amen. And praise God, these, these, these men, we love these people. We love Brother Samuel, amen. Truly, Sister Peggy, praise God. And, and we can see the change. The change like the autumn leaves are coming, the winter's coming. We see the change in our lives. We get older. I am that way. But I, I don't care. I don't care what God can take me whatever way he wants. I don't care. And when he wants, amen. That's his call. And I'll t on, but until then, my heart will go on singing. Until then, I ain't going to back down. I ain't going to back over. I ain't going to give any victories to the devil. You know, if you hand him a stick, he'll beat you with it. 
the best advice I can give you is don't hand him the stick. Amen. I tell you what. You know, you could go on and on and on, but it's so, so lovely. And I could go on and on. I could go give you another hour if you wanted. But, my, you got to go and get to your own places, and, and we got to do what we got to do to us afterward. But God bless you. Amen. And, uh, you know, Rusty Goodman sang a song. I don't know if you could sing it here. I, I do like the way the music has. I'm not saying there was anything wrong with it. It never was. But it's developed. Amen. And I've got all the young people now playing it. And, and that's just a wonderful thing. And I want to thank God for that, for our young people. Hallelujah. And like Brother Branham said, Brother Branham said, you know, with all this transgender stuff, you could go on a million things. All that. And, and, and Ronald was saying, he said, they're coming after our children, but they ain't going to get them. Hallelujah. We've got a token tonight. We've got a token tonight. And we ain't giving the devil nothing. We're not giving them the children. We're not giving them our young people. They may go to college, but God will go to go with them. Hallelujah. Wherever they go, he'll stay true to them if they stay true to him. Right. Amen. So we're just so thankful for that. And you know, Rusty could sing at the end of it. Well, I wouldn't take nothing for my journey now. I got to make it to heaven some pal. Though the devil has tempted me, tried to turn me around, offered me all this. Boy, I remember people, you know, the United Pentecostals. Oh, we could really set you up, give you a good salary, and build your church and give you a good house and all that. And uh, would you do it? No. Because I don't believe in denominationalism. Even then, I didn't believe in it. The, the, uh, the church of, uh, what do you call it? The, um, the Pentecostals, amen. The church of, what was it? Not God, but amen. Uh, it'll come to me. And, and they were the same. Come and join us. You know, we'll do this, we'll do that. I said, no, won't be doing it, you know. Because I knew, even then, Brother Wade, there's something deeper. And I was looking for that. I knew there was something that was beyond my ken at that time. But it was coming. It was there. It was real. It was somewhere. And then I found it. Hallelujah. The day I found it, oh, what a rejoicing that was. Amen. And I'm glad. Hallelujah. I'm glad I found it. Praise God. And... Uh, Amen. Every day I look over at that little Hoffman. Uh, amen. I, I, and uh, praise God. I look over and when I'm reading my Bible, I can see Brother Branham and that pillar of fire over over him. Them Catholics come in and said, my, you're just like here. Your, 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 your tabernacle is so simple. I said, that's right. Praise God. But you know what I've got on the, uh, as you go out the door? The beauty of the church. It's not it's a great big $10 million church. The beauty of the church is the character of its people. And I'm talking to the church today, spiritual. Your character is the beauty of the church. And you've got a lovely character. I can feel it, sense it, and I'm glad I've been here today. Praise God, even if there wasn't a dime involved. Hallelujah, I'm glad just to be here in fellowship with you. Amen, and glad he brought me back after these years. And my, you keep praying. I keep telling people that to say, we'd love you to come back, we'd love you to come back. So why don't you pray about it? Just pray, just ask, and God might say, okay, I'll do something for him and give him that, and he'll get you, you know. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. God will raise up whatever he wants, you know. He could raise up stones to be children of Abraham, could he not? Amen. So God bless you today and whatever way, uh, brother, uh, pastor here, uh, amen. We know our pastor, uh, Emeritus, amen. Two years he hasn't preached now, but praise God, uh, uh, he's, he's my pastor today, amen, in this place. And, uh, and, and brother Samuel will always be. I love brother Samuel and God knows that's the truth. Because I can see so something real in that man, I could. And I appreciate that. And this can go all around the world. That's what I appreciate it. Now, praise God. So if, if there's any needs and you feel, just come out or stand where you are. It don't matter. It don't matter. Praise God. Sometimes the young people in India would come out. I, I remember preaching in a, 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 not a preaching, I was asked to go and pray for a cancer patient. And we saw people heal the cancer. Really? Amen. My goodness, you know, a girl and she was, she was doing uh, the, the treatment and her, all her hair was gone. And about a year or so later uh, at the church, this girl came by and said, do you recognize me? And I said, well, your face looks familiar. And she said, yes. Yeah. She said, I had cancer, but I'm healed. I said, praise God. And her hair was growing back again. You know, thank God for it. You rejoice at every victory. I'm glad I'm a part of the, the, the family of God. When one sheds a tear, we all shed a tear. 
Hallelujah. When one has a victory, we all have a victory. Right. Praise God. That's the way it is. It's wonderful. Right. Would you be in anything else? Right. Would you? Would you want to be, you know, the Solid Rock Baptist Church? <laughs> Amen. What solid rock are they building on? Amen. But you've built on a solid rock. You've got a foundation today. Right. Hallelujah. Right. You know, the Antichrist, what? Uh, hell hasn't got a foundation. Right. You know, the, the fallen run down to that. Right. My, but we've got a foundation Amen. today, Amen. Uh, and Jesus Christ is that foundation Amen. that this church is Amen. built on, that his bride Amen. has come forth out of. That. I'm glad. Amen. Oh my, you will find out, folks. All of America couldn't touch what you've got today. Amen. It's so true. Amen. I'm just try- finding it hard to stop. It's just so precious that all of America hasn't got what you've got today. And when you enter into that, read Psalm 45, when you enter into that and see that thy throne, O God, is forever and ever, and thy scepter, a scepter of righteousness. Amen. 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 And that queen in that lovely fine linen, the righteousness of the saints, seated beside him in his throne. Why? Because you overcame He said, brother, do you really believe I'm going to overcome? Brother, make I believe it with all my heart. Amen. 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 Brother Branham was asked one time, uh, Tom Brown, he was talking to him. He said, brother Branham, my my wife, uh, Marlon, it's her birthday. And I'm I'm down here at the meeting. He said, could could you you do something for Marlon? And and brother Branham says, oh, if I had known I would have bought her something. And he turned around and he said, well, okay, I've got something for her. So he he phoned up and he says, brother Branham wants to talk to you, Marlon. And he says, yes, brother Branham. He said, brother, I said, sister. I'm, I'm just want to say congratulations on your birthday and God bless you on it. And he said, I've got a little, a little present for you for your birthday. He said, I saw you two folks walking on the streets of glory. Well, well, I'm not finished just for a moment, brother. Well, I'll tell you what. I saw you folks walking on the streets of glory. I seen you all, Sister Ann and all, walking on the streets of glory because you have obeyed the word of God. Amen. Know where you came from. Know where you're going. And I'll tell you, you'll be there as sure as you're sitting on your seat today. That's a wonderful thing to know. If you don't know that today, get it real. Get it real with God. Amen. If you don't know that, just ask the Lord into your heart. I love young people. Amen. And praise God, do it. Just do it. Hallelujah. And it's just wonderful. that. But you're only guessing that. No, I'm not. Because I know where you came from in the mind of God. I know you were chosen before the world was even made. Oh, my, isn't that wonderful? Isn't that wonderful how God, sister, you know how God has dealt with us? Wonderful. The grace of God. Hallelujah. Saved a wretch like me. Just wonderful. And the height that he's lifted to. You know, he said, could you really prove? That, you know, when Brother Branham talked about a horse and all that, do you know what I say to my little dog? I know some of you have got little dogs. You know, I say to my little dog, she, she's a little uh, King Charles Spaniel. Beautiful. And I take her out sometimes with me. But here we are with her. And I'd say, do you know in the millennium, you're going to be with me? <laughs> oh, Brother George, you're leaving on a big note here. What are you talking about? You know, I tell you what, I tell you what, okay. He that overcometh, and this is what we're talking about, Brother Wade. He that overcometh, I will grant, amen, to know all things, to everything will be revealed, everything will be given. You will experience everything. Everything that God is, God is going to let us experience. Everything. Whether it's a creator. So you say, oh, but a, a dog doesn't have a soul, but I've got a spoken word in my life, my, my lips. And if I can't speak that word, amen, that becomes a little dog from them very things that she was made of. Hallelujah, it'll be the little and she'll lick my hand. Amen, and we'll be there in the millennium. Woo! Whatever, wherever you have it, it's going to be a big place. And that millennium, it's going to be wonderful. Hallelujah. And, and, and I'll tell you what, don't forget our Jewish friends. I remember, a lot of you don't know it, but boy, I had a wonderful time with the, the, the Israeli ambassador when he came up to Donegal and, and he asked me, would, could me and my family, Jacqueline and my daughter and my sister-in-law, go out for dinner? And we met the Israeli ambassador to the country. And there we were that night with him. And I said, are you okay here? He had the two uh, officers down, but he said, no, we're okay. And we had a ball. Oh. Amen. He said, your name should be Cohen. I said, well, what would you mean? I didn't know what he meant. And you know, Cohen is the priest. <laughs> the priestly, yeah. And he said that. He said, you know more about the Bible than I do. Amen. I said, well, that wouldn't be it. But later on, when he was leaving his uh, ambassadorial post, 
And I, came, I was just out of America. And I came from the airport and got changed and I had my cases in. We drove into their compound. I, I don't know how we did it. That they let us in with the cases and all, you know. Could have had anything. But anyway, and we were up there. And we had a little, my wife had made him a few little gifts. And, and I was saying to him, I said, you know, I said, Ambassador, could I say this? I said, you asked me what I believed. I said, but I never really got to talk to you about the Godhead, and I'm not going to do it very much. I said, but I believe in the God of Abraham, Isaac, Amen. and Jacob. Amen. I believe he's one God. Yep. I don't believe he's three gods. I believe he's one God. Yes. Amen. And I've got something else for you. I said, I had a dream of you. I had a dream of you. And we were in a lovely place. We were driving along. And we just pulled in, and it was a beautiful lake and mountains, and we pulled over. Amen. And I said to you, Ambassador, let's stop here and rest a while. It's going to be rest. It's going to be rest. It's going to be peace that you've never experienced. My peace I give unto you. And I said, one day I will sit with you in that place because he showed me a word. Amen. I said, we will meet again. Isn't that lovely? Amen. Isn't that lovely? Amen. We will Amen. meet again. Till we meet, till we meet, till we meet at Jesus' feet. God be with you till we meet again. Amen. Thank you, brother. You give me too much liberty today. <laughs> Amen. Hey, God bless you. Thank you. I love you too, brother. God bless you. Let's give him another hand. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Oh, my. If you have a need, let's sing a song. Brother George is correct. If you have a need today, come and let's see what God's got for you. Amen. Brother George has been through, been through a lot. But like I said, he hasn't been scared. He's been doing the Lord's work. And if you do the Lord's work, you don't have to be scared. Amen. Amen. Um, first time I went to Jamaica, uh, they took me to a, uh, a town called Mandeville, and I was the only white guy there, you know, and sitting in a, in a car that didn't have any windows, couldn't roll them up because they weren't there. And uh, these, black, these black people walking by in there. <laughs> And they walk by in the window like that. And I'm sitting there with a little bitty girl on this side, a little boy on this side. And he said, I'll be right back. I'm going to go do something. So he takes off. But I didn't feel one bit scared. No. No, I just, yeah, just wave at them and say, God bless you, you know. And I, I'm here for a little while. I'm not staying. I'm, I'll be here for a little while, though. But if you go there with the, with the word of the Lord, you don't have to worry about it. Let's sing a song. Let's remember Brother George. Wherever he goes, I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus that we see you before the rapture takes place. Amen. But if we don't, Amen. you'll be one we'll see. Amen. Amen. Yes, they won't be a, they won't be a big pond in between us anymore. Amen. All right? Fuck. That'd just be travel like a thought. Yes, sir. Let's go see Brother George. Amen. Down from his glory. If you have a need, let's sing a song. Ever living story, my God and Savior came, what? and Jesus was his name. Born in a manger to his own astray.
sing it to him. Great. 
of the Godhead bodily is in his bride. Amen. We're part of that great I am. Amen. Like we were talking, you know, everybody's looking for looking for Amen. Jesus to come. Well, he's already here. Amen. Amen. He's here in his bride. Amen. That's the secret mystery. Yes. He's already here. When they see him, it's over with. Right. When the world sees Jesus Christ, he's coming as a judge. But he come to us as our king. Yes, and we're robed in his his righteousness. Amen. You love the Lord? You love Brother George? Let's give him another. You know, Brother George, when you talk about your little dog, you know, Brother Branham's dog was there. Yes, sir. And, and that's a life. But you know, God thought so much of a prophet. His repossessed chair is going to be there. It's not just a chair that wore out. They repossessed it. Man repossessed his chair. Remember, he walks in, he says, where's the dad? And she said, oh, we couldn't make the payments on it. Well, they repossessed it. Well, God said, no, I'm just going to hold it here for a little while. I'm going to give it to you over there, and I'm going to make it eternal. And nobody can touch it no more. What a mighty God we serve. That's a God that will give you your chair that man didn't think enough of to leave for you to sit in. That's what God thinks of us. It's personal. We have a little creator inside of us to bring that little dog, to bring that horse, to bring the different things. You think, oh, no, this is all frivolous stuff. No, you know what? God put it every bit in his bride. He's put every effort he's got in his bride because you know why? Because he knows she'll love him back. People might be given eternal life over there, Brother George. That's okay. I want it right here. I want it right here. Because you, you, you think of what, what I've always told you, the greatest revelation in this message was that Brother Brown told us, Brother John, we're not going to have to stand before judgment. Amen. And we're not going through tribulation. Amen. So those are two great revelations that, that, that to me that he has hid me in his pavilion. He has given me grace Amen. and you Amen. if you're born again. Now, if you're not born again, you got to make it on your own. I would not want to make it on my own. That's right. But if I go and stand in his righteousness, yes. I'm already judged. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Today, the word judged us. Right. Here, not over there, the word yeah. judged us here. Right. What Brother George said is judging us. Either we're going to take it and say, well, God, that's, that's, what, that's mine. Or you're going to say, no, that wasn't for me. Oh, and you know what you've done? One day he's going to say, you turned me down. Yeah. On October the 14th. Oh. 2023, we sent a little man from, I sent a little man, God said, I sent a little man from Ireland to come and preach to you, and you turned me down. Don't do that. Amen. Don't turn him down. Amen. Accept him with open arms. Amen. He accepts you with open arms. Nail scarred hands. You love the Lord. 
like Brother George said, this is a love affair. This all love that got out in the world, that's that's okay. It's filial love, and it goes all the way down to, to just garbage. Yeah. But the love of God, that agape, agape love, I'm going to get to it sooner or later. But that agape love is what brought you right here. That's what brought you here. The love of God brought you into this world like me and Brother George is talking about. I preached at Brother Ron Spencer's one time, and and I told him, I said, we were talking about predestination. I said, you know, predestination, we look at that and we know that it was the foreknowledge of God. So he foreknew you were going to be here, so he was going to make sure you got here. Amen. Remember, Brother Brown said he took this one, bred it this one, took this one to this one, this one, this one to get you here. Okay. Right? right? Now you think about the Civil War. The Civil War was probably 80%. Brother George knows more about the Civil War than I know about anything in this world. Brother George, one day he said, now if Sherman would have come over this way and if this one would have come, I said, well, you studied that? He studied the battle. He just don't know their names. He studied the battle. All right? But you take the Civil War. There were 600,000 men killed or wounded in the Civil War. 600,000 men. That's 600,000 generations. If, if those kids, which they were young kids, if they died before they had children, their generation was completely cut off. Their seed went nowhere. There was no gene line. I'm talking about natural, yep. right? Yep. But somebody made it through the Civil War. Amen. What about an angel that God said, hey, go down there and make sure that kid makes it through Gettysburg. Right. There's they 30,000 men going to die that day, but you make sure that right there makes it. Right. And here comes a sniper bullet, and that angel goes... I believe that. That's not a fairy tale. You didn't get here by chance. Amen? There's more going on in another dimension than there are in this dimension. Battles, we saw one today. We saw a battle today, right there. And like Brother Donnie said, the devil has no business in this building. He has no business being here. And we rebuked him, and she's, she's actually up now, and they're going to run some tests on her, but she's talking, and she's alert. She just can't remember what happened. She just remembered that her hip was hurting, and then she was at the hospital. So let's just remember in prayer they're going to run their test, and that's okay. But let them run their test to tell her she's okay. Amen. Amen? Let them run their test to say, hey, you're okay. Everything's fine. Maybe it was just something, something happened. So, but we sure love Sister Mary, and we appreciate her. And um, just keep her in prayer. Yes, sir. Devil's wanting it. She's trying to her walk. You look at that. He's just an, he's an awful devil. She's just starting in her walk, Brother George. She's trying to do right. She's trying to become come to church and become a, a Christian. And, but you know what? It was given, permitted by God, just like Job. Have you considered my servant Job? Devil wasn't even looking at Job. He wasn't even, Job was over here. The devil was over here. He said, I've been walking to and fro in the earth. And God said, hey, see that guy over there? Hey, he's one of mine. He said, oh, you got to hedge around him. You, 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 you know, you, we've got Brother George's men, uh, message now around. And God's going to say, okay, hang on, man. I'm going to prove to you how much you received of that message today. But you know what? It's all done for the glory of God. Amen. Job's going to be there. Amen. Job would have never been Job had he not went through what he went through. Because there's billions of people that's been on this earth that, that you've never heard their name called. But we all know who Job was. We all know all these people that went through all these situations. We know who they are. Abraham all over the world. You say Abraham, they go, oh, oh, that guy in the Bible, the one, the faithful guy, you know, the guy that had the kid when he was 100 years old. Well, he wasn't 100 years old. He got changed. The world don't know that. But he got changed. And you and I are going to be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. And we're going to be called up to meet him in the air. Love you with the love of the Lord. Thank you, Brother Mike. Said Kim for coming. Brother Mike is going to actually speak for us uh, November the 9th, uh, 10th, 12th. Yeah, thank you. Amen. He's going to be with us at uh, our Thanksgiving dinner, and he's going to speak for us on that day. Just keep all that in your prayer. Also, Brother Tim Cross will be here in November, um, and then we'll have all the other things. Brother Vernon will be here. So we're going to have uh, 
a good time in the Lord. Amen. We appreciate Brother George one more time. God bless you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for getting well. This pulpit's open to you. My dad told you, my dad many years ago, he told me, he said, now all these people you're talking to at, at Ruth Camp, said, now you make sure they ain't coming on that Sunday right after you, uh, right after the um, camp. He said, because that's Brother George's Sunday. Amen. So Brother George was always the first one after camp meeting. He was one to come in on Sunday and speak for us, and we miss that. Yes. Next year, if there is a next year, that Sunday's still open. <laughs> okay? That Sunday's still open for you. I may fill it with somebody else if you say no, but if you're coming, it'll be for you. So we love Brother George, and we appreciate his, his ministry, appreciate his stand for the message, and we sure love him, and we appreciate all of you coming. So let's sing... Let's sing the um, chorus to that song again. Oh, how I love him. <clears throat> and then you'll be dismissed. And like I said, if you want to go see Brother Dale, then you need to let us know. Brother George and I, we're going down there to see to see Dad. And then remember, Brother John and Sister Ma is going to be with us this, this Wednesday. And uh, just pray for their traveling mercy. They're coming down to be with us for a couple of days, and then they're going on to Texas, but they wanted to see Brother Dale. So we sure appreciate Brother John and Sister Ma. Uh, coming and visiting us. So let's sing it to him. And let's sing, how we love him. Oh, you know how you love him? You project him. Right? Love projects. Grace takes over. So let's sing this one, and then we'll be dismissed. <clears throat> oh, how I love Oh, how you're dismissed. I love.